Atia stands firm on disapproval for AZV premiums to be raised. Plus, in today's lifestyle segment, Aruba has been listed as one of the top 10 most affordable Caribbean vacations in the world. And we discuss certain policies that needs to be adjusted in order to reach the government's 2020 vision. 15 on 15 starts right now. Thanks for joining us. I'm Yen Tulum. There is dialogue between policymakers to increase AZV premiums. Atia, Aruba's trade industry association, is taking a firm stance against this. Representatives from Atia spoke to ATV to voice their concern on the possibility of premiums to be raised for AZV. Merchants are requesting for other alternatives to be explored prior to this decision being made. Reason being, the recent tax and miscellaneous increases have forced employers to raise their prices. This reduces their competitiveness in the market. Atia wants to make their position on this clear prior to meeting with policymakers so other solutions will be brought to the table. After the busy carnival season, Aircock National Park has the perfect event for you. How does a relaxing movie night under the stars sound? Here are the details. Indra Zandam, part of the executive team of Aircock National Park, says investment has been made on the material they showcase to the audience on movie nights. She gives details on the feature presentation for Saturday. And this time around we're excited because we've just ordered a new bunch of DVDs and interesting documentaries about nature. Uh, we were looking for something that was going to portray a little bit more what's happening in the region. So not only talking about Alaska but also what happens in South America. So we are very happy to announce that we have bought a new series and it's called World Atlas. And this time the focus will be on South America. We'll be showing the, the two first episodes, which is going to be Lost World and, uh, and Mighty Amazon. Indra says it's important to showcase movies that are relevant to Aruba. Often um, what you see is that the movies that you find are movies that are from other places that are very um, exotic and the thing is when you have information again about the region you're more informed about your own surrounding and that's the link that we're trying to make. The movie night is scheduled for March 8th from 7.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. The objective of the event is to bring people to the park. It goes beyond that though. The ultimate goal is to reach out to the children in hopes of future conservation. We want to draw people to the park and we want people to get to know the park and we want people to see that you can actually recreate in a way that's actually very uh, cheap because it's for free and also to see what the possibility and the potential of the park is. We can host movie nights but we can host other things as well that are is uh, nature related and also to create consciousness about nature. Uh, at a moment, at a certain point when you start seeing the marvel of what it really is, you start having appreciation for it and therefore we keep stressing on bringing kids because kids kids are in the end the, 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 the people that are going to carry this, this, this appreciation for nature and um, there's nothing better than a very emotional and very enthusiastic reaction of a child that sees a big whale on the three by five meter screen and says pisca pisca. So um, this is the type of thing that we want to try to continue doing. On the next show, Indra reveals Aircock Park's long-term goal in exploring the possibility of filming nature within the region to the standard of BBC. She will reveal more on that on the next show. When we come back, Aruba is one of the top 10 most affordable Caribbean vacations in the world. Also, we'll get into topics such as how if you see a glass is half full or empty ultimately impacts the way you eat. Also, the World Health Organization has a reduced recommended daily intake of sugar. Find out what it is after the break. Welcome back from the break. Aruba has received some pretty incredible free publicity thanks to CNN. On its website, the media outlet is currently featuring an article outlining the top 10 most affordable Caribbean vacations. Aruba made the list. On the cover page of the travel section on the CNN's website is an article on the 10 most affordable Caribbean vacations. According to the article, TripAdvisor has priced 20 beautiful destinations with its Trip Index Caribbean. Comparing the cost of a one-week trip for a group of four for the period from March 1st through April 30th, 
Included in the price analysis is the average cost of round-trip airfare from the continental U.S., a seven-night hotel stay, six dinners, and a half-a-day snorkeling excursion. Coming in at number nine on this list is Aruba. For a group of four, it is estimated by TripAdvisor it would cost in total $6,260. The cheapest destination listed was Puerto Rico. The article also listed the most expensive islands to visit, and landing in at the top was St. Bart's, which would cost a group of four people $12,486 for a one-week stay. That is pricey. Moving over to your eating habits, are you the kind of person that looks at the glass as half full or half empty? Believe it or not, your answer could ultimately impact how much junk food you eat. People who think happy thoughts before a meal tend to choose foods that are better for you. Researchers concluded from a study that this may be because positive thinkers tend to be bigger picture people, meaning they see healthy foods as the key to their future well-being and so they rate them highly because they respect how these foods can help them live healthier, better lives. People who are more negative or focus on the present moment, however, tend to not be as abstract and see junk food as a quick fix that will lift their current mood. So bottom line, think happy thoughts before you eat. The study suggests being a happier person overall helps you to appreciate healthy food for what it is. Sticking to health, the World Health Organization is recommending everyone's daily sugar intake to be less than half of what it originally suggested. Take a look. The recommended sugar intake by the World Health Organization was below 10%. Now it is recommended to not consume more than 5% of sugar every day. The suggested limit applies to all sugars added to food, as well as sugar naturally present in things such as honey, syrups, fruit juices, and fruit concentrates. The recommendation that sugar should account for no more than 10% of the calories in the diet was passed in 2002. However, a number of experts think 10% is too high amid rising obesity levels around the world. And on that note, we will have much more when we come back. This is what's coming up next. There are certain policies currently set in place that do not favor the government's sustainability vision. A few issues need to be tackled in order to make it possible for homes and the commercial sector to see a return in investment when converting to energy-efficient ways. Here's the story. Jeff Gitman has experience within the sustainability realm. He has studied green energy and has worked on projects in New York within the relevant field. He breaks it down on where Aruba currently stands with electricity and addresses certain policies that needs to be adjusted. Now, in order for us to reach um, electrical uh, self-sufficiency by 2020, which is, you know, more specifically as it relates to the electrical side of things, we as a country are going to have to produce our own electricity. Um, there's simple ways of looking at it. Uh, there's numbers that range between 100 and 150 megawatts of uh, consumption at any one point in time. Right now, we're able to produce 20, 25 percent of, um, of that consumption. With where we stand, is it reachable? Definitely. Do certain things need to change in order for us to reach that? Yes. One of the main topics that should be discussed by policymakers is the grid. It doesn't happen so quickly though because there's issues such as the grid which, have to, which is probably the most important and most delicate issue. Uh, what does this mean? When electricity is, uh, during the daytime, if a certain amount of electricity is produced, but at night we also need it, um, this has to be planned for. Jeff says there is a connection fee that businesses and homeowners need to pay when they use the grid. This could pose a problem since in certain cases there may not be a return in investment. When it comes to the commercial sector, there is something else that needs to be taken into consideration. The, the cap on com commercial projects, right now it's at 100 kilowatts. 100 kilowatts is um, one-tenth of a megawatt, which is less than one-tenth of what's produced. So it, this, the project that was established at the airport is about a 3.5 uh, megawatt project. It's a, it's a, it's a beautiful project that uh, we look forward to, to seeing off the ground. Um, however, in order to reach these larger numbers, if, a, if we're going to come close to what the Carbon War Room and what TNO has recommended that we set as our goals in the next year, sorry, in the next years, 
as it relates to solar energy, we are still far from it. That is our show for today. Thanks for watching. We'll be back here with a new edition of 15 on 15 on Friday night starting at 7.15 p.m. But where else? But right here on Channel 15 ATV. We'll see you then.